In this experiment, you will be using acetic anhydride and concentrated sulfuric acid, which are both extremely corrosive. If either reagent is spilled on your skin, immediately wash the area with water thoroughly and inform your instructor. To protect yourself in lab, you should always wear long pants and shoes that cover your feet. Also, tie your hair back and wear a lab apron or coat. Always wear your safety goggles. To begin the experiment, weigh out exactly 2 grams of salicylic acid. Your instructor may wish for you to place any unused salicylic acid into a waste beaker to prevent contaminating the original bottle. Transfer your salicylic acid to a clean, dry, 20 centimeter test tube. Next, have your instructor or laboratory assistant dispense exactly 5 milliliters of fresh acetic anhydride into the test tube. Once the acetic anhydride has been added to the test tube, carefully add 5 drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. Remember, handle sulfuric acid with care. Now, use a long stirring rod to stir the mixture until the salicylic acid dissolves. Keep the stirring rod in the test tube and place the test tube in a test tube rack or suitable holder while you proceed with the next activity. Before continuing with the experiment, you will need to set up the apparatus as shown in Figure 1. Begin by clamping a ring clamp to a ring stand and place a piece of wire gauze on the ring clamp. Place a 250 milliliter beaker on the wire gauze and support the beaker with a second ring clamp. Finally, attach a Bunsen burner hose to a gas jet and place the Bunsen burner beneath the 250 milliliter beaker. In step two, you will need to bring a 250 milliliter beaker filled three-fourths full of tap water to boiling. Start by striking a match away from yourself and from others, and hold the match up to the side of the Bunsen burner. Turn the gas on slowly, and make sure that the tip of the inner blue cone is at the bottom of the 250 milliliter beaker. Next, fill a 250 milliliter plastic wash bottle with deionized water and pack it in ice. When the water in the beaker begins to boil vigorously, begin step 3 by turning off the burner and clamp the test tube containing the salicylic acid with acetic anhydride and sulfuric acid into the hot water bath as shown in Figure 1. Then stir the contents of the test tube well for one minute. If solid remains at the bottom of the test tube, notify your instructor. The reaction mixture should remain in the hot water bath for at least 20 minutes. To ensure this, record the time of day on your lab. To use your time efficiently, you should proceed with the iron 3 chloride test found in section B on both the samples of commercial aspirin and salicylic acid while the reaction mixture is heated in the hot water bath. Also, do the starch test on commercial aspirin and on the control as instructed in Section C. Because you will test your synthesized aspirin later, record your observations accurately on the report sheet so a valid comparison with your aspirin can be made. These sections are demonstrated later in the video. To begin Step 4, prepare a 150 milliliter beaker by pouring 5 milliliters of room temperature deionized water into the bottom. After the reaction mixture has heated for at least 20 minutes, remove the test tube from the hot water bath. Then, slowly and cautiously, pour the contents of the test tube into the 150 milliliter beaker containing the 5 milliliters of water. As the hot unreacted acetic anhydride combines with the water, it reacts to form acetic acid. Because this can be a vigorous reaction, the solution in the test tube must be added very slowly to the water in the beaker to avoid spattering. 
Once the reaction in the beaker subsides, stir the mixture for one minute. After stirring, slowly add room temperature deionized water a few drops at a time until a maximum of 40 drops has been added or until the solution becomes cloudy. If the solution becomes clear or transparent again, continue to add water dropwise until the cloud of small crystals of aspirin reappears. If you do not have crystals of aspirin at this point, contact your instructor for advice. Once crystals of aspirin appear in the beaker, rinse the test tube with small volumes of ice-cold deionized water from your wash bottle. Add the rinse to the solution in the 150 milliliter beaker. If you do not have crystals at this point, scratch the inner wall and bottom of the beaker with a glass stirring rod to induce crystal formation. The vibrations produced when the glass scratches glass can induce the formation of crystals. If you still do not have crystals, contact your instructor. Step 6 begins by measuring 20 milliliters of ice cold deionized water in a graduated cylinder and adding it to the 150 milliliter beaker containing the aspirin sample. Stir and then pack the beaker in ice to allow the aspirin to crystallize. The cold temperature drives the formation of crystals. Remember to keep your plastic wash bottle packed in ice when not in use. The beaker should remain packed in ice for at least 10 minutes. During this time, the cloud of white aspirin crystals should grow to fill nearly half the volume of the beaker. The aspirin will be isolated by vacuum filtration. To assemble a vacuum filtration apparatus, attach one end of a length of thick walled vacuum tubing to the side arm of a vacuum flask, and the other end to an aspirator on a water tap. Support the flask on a ring stand so it does not tip over. A Buchner funnel is placed inside a rubber stopper and then fit tightly into the top of the vacuum flask. Turn the water on to ensure that suction is created in the flask. Press the palm of your hand over the funnel and you should feel suction building. If you do not, check your apparatus. In step 9 you will begin filtering your aspirin sample. Place a disc of filter paper in the Buchner funnel so that it covers all of the holes in the flat bottom and wet it with deionized water from the wash bottle to seal the bottom. Then, while suction is applied, slowly pour the contents of the chilled 150 milliliter beaker onto the center of the filter paper, transferring as much solid as you can using the stirring rod, and quick bursts of ice cold water from the wash bottle. Allow the suction to remove as much liquid as possible from the solid. In step 10, you will measure out 10 milliliters of ice cold water from your wash bottle and pour it slowly over the entire surface of the solid on the filter paper to wash out impurities. After two or three minutes, repeat the washing with a second 10 milliliter volume of ice cold water. Then, after two or three additional minutes, use your wash bottle to gently wash the aspirin with sprays of ice cold deionized water for a total of 30 seconds. After washing the aspirin, allow as much liquid as possible to be drawn away from the solid by allowing it to remain under suction for three to five more minutes. After allowing your sample to dry, and while the water is still flowing through the aspirator. Remove the rubber tubing from the sidearm of the vacuum flask, then turn off the water. Do not shut off the water before you remove the tubing. If you do, water may be drawn back into the flask with such a force that it will re-wet the aspirin sample. Step 11 begins by removing a small sample of your synthesized aspirin from the filter and performing the iron 3 chloride test as described in Part B. You should show your results to your instructor and record your observations accurately on the report sheet. Also, remove a few additional crystals to perform the starch test as described in Part C. Your instructor may wish that you complete Step 12 before moving on to Part B, the iron 3 chloride test, or Part C, the starch test, in order to maximize your percent yield. Both Part B and Part C will be described later in the video. Complete step 12 by weighing a disc of clean, dry filter paper on the balance. Be sure to record its mass on the report sheet. Transfer all of the aspirin from the Buchner funnel onto this disc of filter paper. Then, remove the paper with the aspirin on it to a clean watch glass to dry. Your instructor will tell you how to dry your sample of aspirin. This may require setting out the sample to air dry until the next laboratory period. After removing your aspirin sample, discard the liquid in the vacuum flask 
and wet the filter paper as described by your instructor. Your instructor may designate a special collection container for this purpose. You will conclude this part of the experiment by massing your aspirin sample. When your aspirin sample is dry, weigh the paper and the aspirin on the balance. Subtracting the mass of the paper from the mass of the paper and the aspirin will give the mass of the aspirin you prepared. Complete the calculations on the report sheet to determine the percent yield of your synthesis. The presence of unreacted salicylic acid in the synthesized aspirin can be detected with the iron 3 chloride test. Begin the test by adding about 20 drops or 1 milliliter of deionized water to each of four clean 10 centimeter test tubes. Using a clean stirring rod, place a few crystals of salicylic acid into the first test tube. In the second, place a few crystals of powdered commercial aspirin. And in the third, place a few crystals of your synthesized aspirin. The fourth test tube should contain only water and is the control. To each test tube, add one drop of iron 3 chloride solution. Shake each test tube a little and observe the colors produced. Be sure to show your instructor your results and record your observations and conclusions on the report sheet. The presence of starch can be identified by the starch iodine test. Begin by adding about 2 milliliters or 40 drops of deionized water to each of three 10 centimeter test tubes. To the first, add enough powdered commercial aspirin to just cover the bottom of the test tube. To the second, add a small amount of your synthesized aspirin. The third test tube will be left blank and is the control. To each test tube, add one drop of starch iodine solution. A blue or black color will indicate the presence of starch. Show your results to your instructor and be sure to record the colors produced and your conclusions on the report sheet. Methyl salicylate can be prepared in a manner similar to aspirin but at a lower temperature. Since the yield of the product will not be determined for this preparation, exact quantities of starting materials will not have to be used. To begin this preparation, you will have to create a water bath at 70 degrees Celsius. Do this by reheating the water in the 250 milliliter beaker from the previous experiment. Remember, when lighting your Bunsen burner, do so safely. While waiting on your water to come to temperature, Prepare your reaction by placing a small amount of salicylic acid into a 20 centimeter test tube, about the size of the eraser on the end of a pencil. To this, add about 5 milliliters of methyl alcohol. Then, add 5 drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. Remember, use caution when working with sulfuric acid. After preparing the reaction mixture, you will need to monitor the temperature of the water bath until it reaches 70 degrees Celsius. At that time, turn off the gas and place the test tube in the 70 degree water bath and hold the temperature at 70 degrees for 15 minutes while the reaction proceeds. It may be necessary to relight the Bunsen burner to maintain the 70 degree temperature for the water bath. The presence of methyl salicylate can be detected by its minty aroma. Once finished with the experiment, return all materials and remember to clean your lab area.